Hi folks! I just made a video prior to this one called Perfect Square Trinomials, and I recommend you watch that before watching this one, just so you're comfortable when we get to that. Um, sometimes in math class, you're going to be asked to complete the square. Okay? Complete the square is the procedure we're going to do right about here. In fact, we'll do three questions together just to make sure you know how to do it, three different scenarios, just so you feel comfortable with that. But why do we why do we complete the square? Hmm, my pen is not working here. Why do we complete the square? Well, sometimes when you see an equation like this, you are asked to explain, uh, for example, where is the vertex? And when you look at this, it's hard. I mean, you could type it into a a great program like Desmos, and you could quickly see the vertex. But if you, you weren't allowed to use Desmos and you had to do it on paper, completing the square is one way, there are more ways, but completing the square is one way to figure out where the vertex is. If you could take this equation right here, and if you could change it into vertex form, and that form looks like this, it's when you have, it looks something like this. It's where you have a number right here where the h is, okay, and that would be your um, x coordinate. So the h would be sort of the x value when you when you had to graph that on a Cartesian plane, and the k would go on the end. You just have to remember that you take the opposite of what you see. So if there's a negative sign here, it would be a positive h. Now if this part, if this stuff here confuses you, um, that is called the vertex form of a quadratic equation. I have videos on that too. But here on this video, we are trying to focus on how to complete the square. So I can't go on and on about this right now, just because um, we, we can't have videos that are like two hours long. <laughs> so here we go. How would you change this into vertex form like this, into this form? Okay, it's kind of fun once you get the hang of it. Okay, I'm going to start over here just so I have a little more room. What you do is you look at the x squared, you want to make sure there's no negative signs or coefficients in front of there, so there's no 3 or 2 in front of here. If there were, we'd have to factor it out, but there's none here, in fact, okay? So you start by just, just putting a bracket around the first two terms, like this. So far, all we've done is put two brackets here. We haven't changed this thing at all. If you were to graph this on Desmos, you would get the exact same graph as here. So putting these two brackets hasn't changed anything. Okay? What we're going to try to do here is we're going to try and come up with making a trinomial perfect square. Okay? And we just practiced that in the last video that I just made on perfect square trinomials. Okay? So I won't go on and on about that here. What we're going to do is we're going to create a perfect square trinomial. So to do that, we have the middle term of 8x, and the way we just learned to do that in the last video is you take half of this 8, half of this 8 would be 4, and then square it. So you take half of 8, which is 4, and square it. So 4 times 4, you get 16, and you write that down. That is a perfect square, and that's a great number. The only thing is, in math, you can't just write a 16 here without putting something else to make sure everything stays the same. So I'm going to write a minus 16 right beside it, and then plus 5. We're almost done here, people. We want a perfect square trinomial, which means we want to keep this 16 right here, the positive 16. We don't really want this inside the bracket, so we're going to take it outside the bracket, okay? And there's no coefficient in front here or anything. If there was a negative sign or a number here, we'd have to multiply this negative 16 by what's in front in order to get in, in order for it to escape these brackets. But there's only like an invisible one here, let's say. There's an invisible one, so there's nothing that we need to do. It's just a minus 16. So we're going to write it like this: x squared plus 8x plus 16 and we're going to put the bracket there and we're going to have on the outside the minus so we're going to put the minus 16 right here plus 5 and then let's simplify things you don't need to do all of these steps once you get used to it remember a perfect square trinomial so here we have a perfect square trinomial do you remember how to factor this really quickly 
all you do is you factor the first, take the square root of the first and the last term. The square root of 16 is 4. Okay, and you can put your little squared here. And the sign is just the sign that you get in the, from the middle term, right here. Okay, and on the end, we have negative 16 and 5. And if you were to put those together, you would get negative, looks like negative 9. Whoops. You would not get negative 9. Whoops. You would get negative 11. <laughs> so there we have it. Negative 11. This is in this form, it's in vertex form, and now we can say that the vertex of this would be negative 4 and 11, okay? There are other ways to figure out this negative 4 and 11, but is if you have to complete the square, and this is what your teacher is asking you to do, well, we just did that with this equation right here. We're going to practice this two more times just to make sure you get this, okay? The next question looks like this. Okay, before you go and put the brackets here and here, well you can, you can, you can put them here and here, but what we're going to do is get rid of this coefficient of 2 here. We're going to have to, and luckily it works nicely, we're going to divide everything by 2 in here so that we keep things the same. So I'll write on this side so we have more room. I'm just factoring out that 2, okay, dividing everything by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And here's our plus 11. Okay. So if you were to multiply this all out, you would get right back to this, right? All right, let's keep going. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a perfect square trinomial. If you remember, you take half of the middle term. Half of 6 is 3. And 3 times 3 is 9. Don't forget, if you put a plus 9 here, you have to put a minus 9, just to balance things out. And then over here on the end, we still have that plus 11. All right, this one's a little trickier than the, the first one we did. I want this negative 9 or minus 9. I want it outside the brackets, but it can't just be put with the, the 11. You can't just go 11 minus 9, you get 2. Unfortunately, you can't just do that. This 2 has to multiply. In order for this negative 9 to escape the brackets, we need to go 2 times negative 9. 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. Okay? So that is the number that's going to come outside here. So let's write it again. I'm keeping the positive 9. And I'm on the outside, I have plus 11 minus 18. Okay, so all we have to do now, keep the 2 there, let's turn this trinomial, perfect square, let's turn this into the factored form. Okay, so we take the square root of the first and the last term, the square root of 9 is 3, take the sign that you see right here, which is plus, it's squared, and then over here you go 11 minus 18, which should be minus 7. All right, so we know that the uh, vertex of this would be uh, negative 3 and negative 7. If you were to factor or you were to graph this using Desmos, you would end up getting this as your vertex. Okay, so that is called, you know, <laughs> completing the square. Let's do another one. Here we have a coefficient of a negative, okay? We have this negative on the outside. So we have to get rid of that negative before we continue. So let's do that. I bring the negative out. What is that going to do? It's actually going to change the signs inside these brackets. So instead of uh, plus 2x, it's going to be minus 2x. Here we have plus 3. It's not being affected by that because it's outside the brackets. All right, so we've started with this, and now let's continue getting a trinomial perfect squared. Half of 2, half of 2 or negative 2 is negative 1, but if you square that, negative 1 squared is just 1. I write the 1 there and the, and the minus 1 just to keep things balanced. Okay, hopefully this is starting to get easy for you. 
um, x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now, we want this negative 1 to escape the brackets. You can't just put a negative 1 out here, though, because there's a negative sign in front. This negative and this negative have to be multiplied in order for this to escape the brackets. Negative times a negative is a positive, so it's like saying 3 plus 1. Not negative 1, plus 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. And let's finish this off now. We have our negative there. And let's turn this trinomial perfect square into the factored form. So it would be x, take the square root of 1, which is 1. Remember this sign is a minus sign. So we just put it right there. Don't forget the squared. That's very important. And the last is 4. And there goes my phone. I'm just going to stop that. <laughs> and then our vertex here would be at 1 and 4. And we would be done this question. Uh, I don't know if your teacher is going to ask you to state what the vertex would be, but because it's in vertex form, it's just so simple to do that. We know this is a parabola, it's opening down, and it has a vertex of 1, 4. So this is completing the square, and I'm going to actually make a video next on how to do this, how to get to this form right here, without having to do all this work, without having to do completing the square at all. Um, Completing the square is something that I offer as one way in a math class. I don't want to say that it's the only way, and so I do have a faster way, and that will be the next video that you'll see on uh, how to do it without completing the square. Or it'll have a title something like that. Okay, hopefully this hasn't been too confusing, and hopefully you can complete the square because of course you're going to be asked to do it in your math class. And you can't say, oh, I know another way to do it. Your teacher will probably want you to complete the square, just to show that you know how. And it's not too bad once you get used to it. Okay, good luck. Take care.